into today's episode, I just want to say that today's going to be a double episode, which means we're going to be talking about football and baseball together, as opposed to their own separate series because it's late at night and I'm tired. So just be aware of that. And to me, double episode means we got to do a double theme. So right after I'm done, we're going to play the extra innings theme. Let's go to that. Welcome back to another video on the channel. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Basically today, since it's late and I'm tired and I'm making this intro, we're going to be combining an episode of Overtime and Extra Innings because I've been due for an Extra Innings episode in a while. And the giant season is about to start. And right now it's going to be one day because it's past 12. I'm tired. I'll record the rest of the video tomorrow, but I just want to get this intro out. And yes, I will be wearing the hat and probably a different shirt. So like I said, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Just keep viewing the videos because the more views I get, the more likes, the more I can do this. A lot more transitions, a lot better transitions, hopefully. Hopefully I edit them better. And let's get into it. Okay, I'm back after about a day's worth of time. But about a second's worth of time for you guys. Basically, I said we we're going to talk about baseball and football in the same episode. I think I said that twice, three times, whatever. Basically, we'll start with the Giants because tomorrow they play their first week one game against Tennessee. Some stuff, some news, injury news. And well, then we'll go into the Yankees, which I got a good bit to say about them. All right, starting with New York. Basically, the New York Giants are, I don't really know what to think right now. I, I got the feeling we're going to have like a mediocre-ish season, and then we're going to finish like 8, 9, 9, and 8. Then we might miss the playoffs, or I might just make the wild card. Then you got a choice to make. Do you keep Daniel Jones for what he did? Or do you get rid of him and move on to a new better quarterback? The only way I see Daniel Jones staying is if, he balls out this year. As if he has possible offensive player of the year and or MVP statistics, or at least compete in the race for that, if he makes the playoffs, if he wins a few playoff games, if we get like an 11 and 5 record, I, I don't know. I, mean, I guess, yeah. That, that's, what, that's the only ways I think Jones can stay. However, he's working with the best O-line he's ever had. Probably the best receiving core he's ever had. Healthy, at least. A, full, a recovered Saquon Barkley, from what I hear. And I don't know what to really think about that. I feel like Barkley's in the same boat as Jones, but is a little less pressure on him because he's still Saquon Barkley. So he's not going to be bad or horrible. He'll be mediocre at best, or mediocre at worst, I should say. So Berkeley's doing that, but with Jones, he's got probably the best coaching system he's ever had. The best O-line, the best running back, the best running back he's had other than 2019 Barkley, a recovered 2019-ish Barkley, the best receiving core, and he's got a team to lead. And now it's, can you make the team? And I know you can make a million excuses for him, but eventually you got to show the next step in development. The next step in development has to be shown. It doesn't have to be amazing. Well, he does to a certain extent. He doesn't have to be incredible. He just has to show that he's taking the next step in development, that he's ready to move on. And Giants fans want to win now. We're probably not going to win now. We, I, feel, I see next season or maybe the season after that, we're possible Super Bowl contenders if we play it right. But sometimes we don't play it right. That's just the truth with Daniel Jones. you should have just seen there was a Titans-Giants box score, which is basically what's going on tomorrow, what's going to happen, what are the odds compared to what I vote, what did the people think, and all that. Basically, majority says the Giants are going to lose to the Titans, and why wouldn't they? I mean, the, the average fan, the average non-New Yorker fan, 
just thinking, how are they going to stop Derrick Henry when he's healthy? They can't stop Derrick Henry when he's hurt. How are they going to stop him when he's healthy? Honestly, I can't really argue that because that, that has reason. Also, you got a guy like Traylon Burks who is like a worse version of Debo Samuel. Can they stop him? I think they can stop him if they play well against him, if they cover or if they put the pressure on Tannehill. That's how they're going to beat the Titans offense. If they put the pressure on Tannehill, if they stop Derrick Henry in the run or at least hold him to gains of about two or three each time, the way they stop it, this this Titans offense is to hold Derrick Henry serviceably and then put the pressure on Tannehill and force you to beat him with the, beat the Giants defense with his arm. Because honestly, he doesn't have the arm to beat the Giants defense. He doesn't have the speed to... Do, the only thing he has is age and experience, and that only goes so far whenever you got eight guys crashing up on you. And honestly, I I think the blitz is going to be a big part of the, a big part of our season, just not maybe now because of the next piece of information I'm about to give. And yes, the rumors are true. Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau are listed as doubtful for the New York Giants in playing next week, in playing today, tomorrow, I should say, not next week, but today. They're listed as doubtful, which is essentially saying, unless some, unless they make drastic improvements, they ain't playing, or we're not going to play them to risk them getting hurt. Honestly, it, it has reason. It has, it has reason. It has its meaning. And it's a pretty good idea not to play your superstars, but I just know... The Titans are going to use that. They're going to run to Derrick Henry because we, they know without Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau, the Giants are going to have a really hard time pressuring Tannehill. That's just the truth, and I can't argue the truth. Well, another news for New York. There's not really much else going on other than Titans tomorrow. I think I did my season prediction last time. Basically, it's 425 game. It's an evening-ish game. 9-11, obviously not the greatest date to play a football game, but I, I can't really change the date or the weather. Point being, it's going to be a good game. I, I expect it to be a close enough score where the Giants will keep up around 20-ish points. I think the Giants can hold the Titans to their 20-ish points. I think the score, no matter who wins, is going to finish 24-21. Either the Giants win 24-21 or the Titans win 24-21. But all I know is that if the Giants win 24-21 and somebody gets a big payday for that, I want at least 10% of their winnings because I wrote the score 24 <laughs> Sorry. Because I wrote the score 24-21. <laughs> Sorry. Slight laugh. It's, it really sounds like a fake laugh. I just have that laugh. I don't know why. Basically, yeah, that's all for the New York Giants, really. Tomorrow is a big date to figure out what we got this season. Now to talk about the Yankees. Let me take this hat off and put this hat on. Tomorrow's 9-11, so got to represent. I don't, have an NY, I don't have an NYPD or FDNY hat, and I thought I had one. I can't find it. If I find it, I'll wear it later. But basically... Date of 9-11, horrible attacks happened on the Pentagon, the, the World Trade Center in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just a little, a little stuttering. Those, that day was uh, kind of a wake-up call for New York, and the lives lost there on that day should not have been lost. Those are... It was an extremist attack. It shouldn't. Have, it should have never happened. And you can only hope that the families are doing fine. The firefighters who fought are not suffering from any of the foams used on that date. It's just. So. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to talk about baseball right after talking about a subject like that, but. Gonna try and just make that transition as not awkward as possible. <clears throat> Sorry. Basically, with the Yankees, the Yankees are still number one in first place, as you'll see right now. Alright, I'll see what I forgot in the next cast. Let me take this hat off. That's for sports talk and baseball. 
put this hat back on. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and double upload. It's gonna be baseball and football update with the Giants and the Yankees. Most likely, sometimes I'll talk about the Jets and the Mets. You know what? Yeah, hundred likes. I'll talk about the Jets for an episode. Two hundred. We'll talk about the Mets. Three hundred. I'll talk about. Let me see. I'll talk about the Red Sox. There you go. Three hundred. I'll talk about how bad the Red Sox are doing. 300 likes. That's what you got to get to. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time on Overtime or Extra Innings. You should have seen the AL and the NL standings at the point. Basically, the Yankees are number one, but they're only three and a half games ahead of Tampa Bay. And they face Tampa Bay for the next two or three games. So... Heading into the back stretch of the season, they cannot lose these games against Tampa. If they win these games, they take like a six or five game lead against Tampa, and if they start getting on a on like a half win streak, they they'll be good. They'll be good till the end. They just need a divisional spot. We just don't need to play in the wild card for once. For once, can we just not play in the wild card? Does not have to worry about losing in round one. We lost in round one last year. That shouldn't have happened. I thought Boone was going to get fired. He didn't get fired. They fired everybody else, though. So don't lose round one. All right, second thing. The Yankees and their inability to score runs other than Judge is really not their fault. Everybody seems to find a way to get injured whenever it matters, which is a really big problem. But it seems like every time that happens every year, the rookies seem to step up until it gets to playoff time, and the other players come back. They win some games, and then they lose in the divisional or ALCS, sometimes a wild card. Basically, point, the point I'm making is this has been the same loop for the last like five years. Can, can, we, can we switch it up, please? Just once. Just once. Can we win a World Series? Well, just once. Just once. Just once. We won two World Series every decade, with the exception of the 2010, of the 2000s. Nope, nope, the 2010s, I should say. Yeah, with the exceptions of, with the exception of the 2010s, we've won two Super Bowl, two two World Series every year. I'm I'm losing it. I I don't know what's wrong with me. Basically, yeah, Yankees need to figure it out and figure it out quick before playoff time comes around. And. About the playoffs, Aaron Judge. I don't know what this man is doing. He's obviously not on PEDs because they've tested him before. He ain't doing that. If he, if he gets busted on PEDs, I mean, people will probably expect it at this point. Like, oh, he got to be on PEDs. But if he's not, this is record-breaking stuff we're seeing here. <laughs> if he's not, I don't think he is. I think in the integrity of Aaron Judge, the way he plays, the way he his attitude is towards the game. I don't think he's doing that. If he gets caught, he gets caught. If, he, if he's doing it, he's doing it. There's nothing you can do about that. He already did it. But, hey, the runs counted. The runs counted for the Yankees. I don't think he's on I don't think he's on PEDs. If he's not on PEDs, good for him. Good for him that he's heading on pace for 60-some 60, 60 home runs, beating Roger Maris and all that. Good for him if he's doing that. He's not on PDs. Good for him. Come play on. I think that I heard from uh, from Fox Sports, ESPN, and a bunch of other sites that the Yankees are preparing to make a very competitive offer for Aaron Judge. I'd love to see what that offer exactly is because if it's not something really competitive, like if it's not trout worthy. Trout worthy contracts, then I don't think he's gonna resign. And now they're trying to put this on him, like he's the one who ain't gonna who ain't want to do it. When they offer him like two two teen two hundred and some teens, I mean he's worth more than that. He is worth more than that. And I get I respect him trying to bet on himself. Go like, I think I can play better than what you're trying to give me. So I'm gonna play this year out. I'm gonna see what I do. Test free agency, and then I'll probably sign back with you guys if you guys want to play. Yankees want to play? Let's see it happen. I don't I don't know if Judge is really focused on that because the Yankees are losing, so he's probably focused on the season, which I also respect to a certain extent, of course, because 
Sometimes stuff happens. Okay, there's not really much else to talk about with the Yankees or the Giants. And... Oh, wait, nope. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Before I forget... I've forgotten. Yep, I've forgotten. I don't know. I forgot.